The song Varaha Rupam from Kantara created a huge controversy after a Kerala based rock band named Thaikadam Bridge accused them of plagiarism. They filed two lawsuits, and two courts in Kerala had granted an injunction against the usage of the song by the makers of Kantara. However, Hambale Films have managed to get a stay from the court against the injunction. So, what exactly does the copyright laws do in our country? What options do Taikadam Bridge have now? Will the issue set an example for filmmakers in the coming days? Well, to talk more about it, we have copyright litigator Mr. Pranav Kumar Mysore with us. Hello, Mr. Pranav. Welcome to the Fed. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Good afternoon sir. Uh, when Kantara was released on Amazon on November 4th, uh, it didn't have the song Varaha Rupam. And uh, that was considered as a victory for Taikadam Bridge. Now, Hambale Films have seem to have an upper hand after getting a stay at uh, a court in Koli Code. So what exactly is happening, sir? Uh, first of all, I would like to start with a disclaimer. I'm uh, not appearing for either of the parties before the court. As an independent practitioner, I would like to give certain inputs. With this disclaimer, see now, normally when a particular person composes a song, he composes lyrics, as well as a music tune. And then together he makes a sound recording. And that sound recording would be synchronized later on to a cinematographic film. This is the normal usage. When a person alleges that there is his content or his copyrighted sound recording, which he has composed and he's the author of it. And if he believes and if he has reasonable belief to understand that there is somebody else is using it without his permission. Definitely, yes, the copyrights law provides enables him to go to the necessary court or necessary legal recourse. Now, coming to the Kantara issue, uh, I believe that this plaintiff, the band, they felt that they, this particular song could be copied, a version of their own song. And they approach, they not exhaust their legal remedies under the copyrights law. They approach the trial court because that is the court of first instance. The moment when they when the trial court heard the matter ex parte, they issued a stay of not using this particular elite song, meaning thereby they can use the entire uh, film. The entire case is not for the entire film. It's only for the song. The song should not be used as what the order says. Subsequent to this, because there are certain aspects, there are certain other uh, reliefs which a defendant or against a person who the matter has been filed, they would have certain reliefs. In order to exhaust those reliefs, Hombale Films approached the High Court. Now the High Court, after hearing both the sides, remanded back the matter back to the trial court and said that you file your objections, you file your counter statements, everything there before the trial court and the trial court will take it forward. And the latest development as of yesterday is that the trial court has returned back the file to the plaintiff, that is the band, to be filed before an appropriate authority or an appropriate bench. So by, by looking into this particular order, we can understand that they may be filing the same very suit before the proper jurisdictional court within a time spilated manner. So essentially at the moment, you it's a gray area whether uh, this particular song could be used, could not be used and things like that. But there is no stay by the high court of uh, staying the uh, order of the trial court. And the trial court suit has been returned back. So this is the present scenario. So does this mean that the makers of Kantara can now go ahead and use the song on, uh, you know, in at, on Amazon Prime or uh, the other places like Spotify, Wink, etc.? Uh, according to me, that's a preposition to be mooted because there's no yes or no answer for that. The reason being that is. They can, they can. You can you see, nobody can stop anybody from doing anything. Okay. So just because the, the plaint has been returned or the case has been returned back, 
that doesn't mean to say that the orders would not be operational. So that is why I said there's no uh, yes or no answer for that. And the proper course of action would be wait till they represent the matter before the appropriate jurisdictional court. And there you have to go ahead and understand whether the order is operational or not operational. So let us assume that the Icodem Bridge approaches the competent authority or the right authority for this to apply this case. And let's say, uh, you know, uh, the music label, which is Matrabhumi, uh, they also are looking for a monetary compensation. Now, how does this work uh, in, the, in the lower court, sir? Now, let's say they, let us assume that they are asking for a crore rupees as compensation. Now, how much would they have to pay? Do they have to pay anything as court fees and fight the case? Or can they just go ahead and, uh, you know, uh, file the case? How does that work? See, now, basically, the moment when anybody is asking for a compensation or a damages in such kind of cases, as per the Copyrights Act, you are entitled for damages. Okay. And when you quantify that particular damage, say, for example, it could be a crore or two crores, whatever that number is, you need to pay a court fees. That court fees would be determined by the state wise. Say, for example, in Karnataka, there is a particular adverum state, uh, means adverum stamp value which you have to pay or the court fees which you have to pay. In Delhi, there's a fixed fee. Likewise, in, uh, in Kerala also, there is certain adverum, uh, like, you know, court fees which has to be paid. So without payment of the court fees, the matter can't go further. The court fees has to be paid based on that particular jurisdictional state laws. I have two questions uh, you know, mm -hmm. with, for, your, uh, for your answer, sir. The first is, what is the usual percentage, an approximate, an average value? What would be that fixed price or that? Of the total See, amount in of Karnataka, for a crore, you can keep it around you know, 2 lakh 17,000 in Karnataka. In Kerala, I need to really look into it because I'm not sure in Kerala how much the court fees would be. Likewise, in Delhi High Court, it would be around 25,000, depending on the nature of your uh, claims. So that's how it will be. The second question is, you mentioned the word quantify. Now, let us assume that I am a music label. Now, let's say I say that I need damages of about, I need compensation of about one crore rupees. Now, how do I quantify that? How do I convince the court that, yes, I have been affected to the tune of one crore rupees? How do I do that? See, normally in any of the IP related matters, be it let alone copyright matters, Quantifying damages is a Herculean task. It's a Herculean task. Okay. You can only ascertain a relative figure for which what we call a trial has to be conducted. In the trial, I need to quantify and I need to prove that because of this unauthorized uh, usage, I have lost my licensing rights. I have lost my licensing revenues and sub-licensing revenues and the revenues which I would get under various provisions of law through various uh, corporate societies. So these are, this is the way how I would prove it before the court. And looking into the way how I'm going to prove it by way of uh, documentary evidences and circumstantial evidences, that's how it will be quantified. See, now just in order to claim, I can claim about 100 crores. Correct. But if I if I am unable to showcase whether how I'm going to quantify it, whether I'm really or like, you know, uh, is it under crores or beyond that? I'm, I really don't know. Until unless a trial has happened. And even if I say 100 crores, I would have to pay that XYZ percentage yes. of money uh, as court fees. And if I lose the case, I don't get that money back. Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's, that's the risk that, you know, people would have to take, Correct. isn't it? All right. Absolutely. So moving on, my next question, uh, you know, as a layman, when it comes to copyrights, now uh, let's take Kantara itself as an example. I could Bridge says that the, con the song is completely lifted from uh, Navarasan. There are, uh, well, Hambale films or uh, uh, the music director and the, the team of Kantara, they say they're inspired. 
however, if you look at the common man, you know, especially on social media, they started talking about ragas and how the ragas have been there for centuries and so on and so forth. So for a layman, uh, how does the corporate laws work in India? For example, I might have, you know, how do, now ragas, we don't know who the real founders of ragas are. So how does the court look at all these? First of all, now in order to address this question, we need to understand on what all aspects we can claim copyrights on. Now coming into the film industry or the music industry, the first set of rights or the first set of work as such, which will be recognized as literary works. Now, the moment when I say literary works, it is nothing but your lyrics, your script, the, and, and the dialogues, everything. Those are literary works. The second set of, uh, or like, you know, the works which, is, which are recognized are music compositions. That is called as musical work. Musical work does not contain any sort of uh, words, lyrics, nothing. So lyrics and literary work and musical work are the two sets of original work. The next set is something called as derivative work. The derivative work is or it comprises of both musical work as well as lyrical work. Combined together, recorded in a, mood and, in a particular mode and medium becomes your sound recording. So this entire three, th three two things combined and binded together comprises of a derivative work and that is sound recording. The next category is cinematographic film. This sound recording which was being made by using the lyrics as well as the musical work recorded in a, in a particular medium together, which is sound recording, which is synchronized to an audio visual or a visual uh, format or a video. So that is nothing but a cinematographic film. Often it is understood that the moment the term cinematographic film is used, it means to say the entire length of the movie. It is not so. Even a 10 minute clip also falls in the category of cinematographic film under the Copyright Act. All right. Now, as a layman, the lyrics may be the same. The raga may be the same. The recording medium may be different. All right. Now, who owns all these copyrights? The original work are always owned and held by people called as authors or composers, they have a statutory right over that as an owner. And they, in fact, they do not have a right to even assign it to anybody else. But for assigning that particular right of collecting the royalty, their share of royalty to a registered copyright society. Now, in India, there are two registered copyright societies when it comes to the film industry. The first one is called as IPRS, that is Indian Performers Performing Rights Society. And the other one is Phonographic Performance Society Limited. That's PPL. Now, IPRS mostly looks into the affairs of the authors who are concerned, authors and the composers are concerned, not the sound recordings part. Because the, uh, in, under the law itself, it's been carved out. For the sound recording owners who are nothing but these music labels or the produ producers or the production houses, they own the sound recording and the cinematographic film. They would fall under the category of PPL, that is Phonographic Performance Limited. So the law is very well cleared in this front. It means completely structurized. The moment when the, all, the, all these issues arise, is that the moment when, like, you know, for example, this Kantara itself, when you, when you read it or when you listen to it together, people would often uh, understand that it is similar. Okay. But pardon me, I'm not making any judgmental thing over here. But according to me, those, those are not similar at all. Both are independent work. Mm -hmm. It's not similar. This is my own personal view. Now, the reason why I'm saying that it's my own is like you know, it's not uh, 
identical and things like that is here first of all you need to understand who owns the rights is it the lyrics what they're talking about because lyrics is completely different and it is not even the the translated version of the malayalam lyrics that's in a completely different context this is in a completely different context now coming to the music composition part music composition is also completely different though it may sound similar it is different okay now the reason why it, we could hear it as the same is just because it is not been heard side to side the moment when a person use like you know hears it side to side definitely he would be having his unbiased opinion saying that those are completely different two different things the problem would be when they when they are heard one after the other so that's the entire issue now coming back to the point of law is concerned the authors and the composers they would be having the right on their lyrics as well as the composition provided if they have been employed by where or they have been under a contract that's a contract for hire if they have been hired to do that they would not be considered as a owners but they would be still authors and they should be given even enough credentials so the, what i'm trying to say over here is who is the author who is the composer who is the owner this has to be first decided and then subsequently the remaining things follow like you know flow strong you've mentioned about listening to both the songs side by side or together now uh, a lot taikodam bridge i assume taikodam bridge also did that or some people on social media put out both the songs side by side for the audience to uh, listen to it and some people said it's similar some said no they're both different and all of that this is for the common man but how do judges in the court uh, listen to I mean, it i'm sure uh, they don't have the time to listen to it in in a uh, in the court hall so how does how do judges decide on these issues I mean, do they listen so to the music or what is often, their basis yeah i understand so these issues are often decided in the court say for example if the track size is much lesser say about 30 seconds or 40 seconds the court will listen to it and then proceed further if it is like you know a bit lengthier version of it the court would ask for an expert opinion a lab report and based on that lab report and based on that particular technical advice report the court's work will proceed further i see the court will court has to take a like you know unbiased opinion right so that's why they would rely upon a neutral technical expert and a technical expert will be appointed okay so i'm sure uh, i really don't want to name them but I'm, i i know of some of the cases that you fought in the past uh when it comes to copyright laws you know especially here in the kind of film industry um does that mean that a music composer cannot get inspired by another music or uh what does he needs to keep in mind when he's composing uh, a particular uh, music being inspired and using it are two different aspects you can be inspired and you like you know you will be creating your own version of it that's permissible under law but these days what is happening and the normal challenge which we are facing over uh, like in the recent past is that the entire song has been taken without editing the entire sound recording is taken and there's no modifications as such they are synchronized with another set of videos so th- this kind of infringement activities is going on inspiration definitely a music director or a music composer can be inspired but at the same time 
one should bear in mind and if he is inspired at least the credentials has to be given that's that's what the law says the credentials has to be given the courtesy has to be given and to go for go one step ahead you can have a nominal license entered into saying that hey i'm using this and if you're okay with it we are proceeding further now here again there's a caveat here and the caveat is that if i am inspired and if i'm running an institute a musical institute for the purpose of imparting education i can use it there's an exception under the law okay so so having said this inspiration is a very relative issue it depends upon what the output or the out product is so in that case uh, what is your opinion on cover songs i'm sure you want, you know what i mean by cover songs okay cover i think songs... supreme court is very clear on that right in mars uh, matter uh, could you shed light on that please yeah so like you know supreme court was very clear on cover versions stating that the cover versions are not infringing are not admitted no not infringing okay so anybody can go ahead and do a cover song but that's that's not a problem is what you try to say yes okay okay uh from what would you what is your piece of advice let's say Uh, let us assume you know this as a concluding question what would be your piece of advice for filmmakers when they are composing music now filmmakers when they are composing music my advice is as a producer please enter into proper like you know agreements have the agreements in place with the music composers with the singers with the performers with the lyricist because in the industry this is a common problem which i have seen over the years because there would not be any agreements at all and at the end of it they all of them will start uh, like you know ending up in uh, these kind of litigations so please on the first step have the set of agreements in place second part of it is this if you are inspired by one person's work you can obviously give him credentials you can like you, know, you need to acknowledge it give credits to it so i'd like to interrupt here now when you say credit now let's talk about taikodam bridge uh, i spoke to uh, vian fernandes who is uh, the frontman of taikodam bridge now he said there were two lawsuits filed by them one by them seeking credits because they say we don't want money we just want them to acknowledge our work and we need credits the second was filed by matrabhumi which is uh, you know who are the which is the music label who owns the music so they are f- seeking uh, monetary benefits uh, so my question here is now the minute uh, you just said you know just give them credits now the minute i say okay i will give you credits the other person is going to come and say okay you giving me credits pay me xyz amount of money for it as well so that is where you know the whole issue starts don't you think no i was ad- i was about to address that particular part of uh, thing this uh, the next part so credits are given credits are given to the authors and the composers you cannot give credit to a owner of a sound recording because if the moment when you give a this uh, like you know credit to the owner of the sound recording obviously this is the entire issue he would say hey you are using it you please enter take a license from me it's as simple as that that when i say like take a license from me that means to say that you pay me some money and be done with it all right so the the issue over here is this the moment when you approach an author okay or if you are inspired by from that particular author give him credits as per the copyrights law okay subsequent to that when you want to use it being inspired doesn't mean to say that you have a right to use 
Okay. That is why I said inspiration is relative. It depends on the output. If the output appears or the end product appears to be in a complete similarity or a similar uh, work, then definitely you need to, you are liable to pay and you need to go take the license and pay it. Instead of having the infringement issue on your head. Right. So, so this is what I would say, wherein you can avoid the litigation as such. All right, Mr. Pranav, but then uh, uh, would you agree when I say that the copyright laws in the country can be a lot more stringent than it is right now? Uh, I think uh, it is uh, of, like you know a very balanced way at the moment. And I don't think it should be more stringent as such. Yes, you have enforcement mechanisms. Enforcement mechanisms can be much more uh, strengthened. There's no doubt about it. But the laws are pretty much uh, very well balanced. The, see, the reason I ask you this question is... Uh, it, you know, the court takes its own time to decide, you not know, to pass a judgment, sometimes months, sometimes week, uh, you know, years together. Now, even though the court had granted an injunction, uh, the Varaha Rupam song kept running in theaters and people enjoyed it. And of course, uh, the makers of Hambali uh, benefit from it uh, financially, all right, uh, to say the least. Of course, you know, it's not in Amazon Prime as of now and, and all of that. So by the time the court decides as to whether they can use it or they cannot use it, one party gets to benefit from it. So that's the reason I said, do you think, you know, there should be stringent laws in it? Or let's say, not to, let's say ha if the court had decided that, no, this is copyright infringement and Kantara cannot use it. They've used it for about 30 days to 40 days, you know, in theaters and benefited out of it financially as well. So uh, don't you think that, you know, that, wouldn't go in favor of Taikunum Bridge because the court took so much yes. time? There, the answer is in two parts. Now, at the time of filing a particular action, okay, before uh, any of the courts, it, there was a constant thing in mind saying that, yeah, in India, the courts are very slow and things like that. With the uh, establishment of the commercial courts under the Commercial Courts Act, the entire waiting period of like, you know, gone are those days, okay? The entire proceedings will get, should get over within a year's time. That's what the commercial courts are doing. They are disposing of the matters within a very short span of time. That's point number one. Now, point number two is concerned. Even if I get an ex parte injunction, when the court says that, hey, stop it, okay? With the kind of magnitude of certain uh, releases of certain uh, like you know movies say for example if at all they were to be released only on ott platforms the compliance of that order would have been much much faster here you have i think in karnataka there must be around i don't remember how many districts are there and how many taluks are there i don't exactly have the number with me but in each and every district of Karnataka, each and every taluk of Karnataka, wherever there is a, a movie theater, Kantara was released. Now, if I were to be plaintiff, how would I go and execute the order? I can't go to each and every theater. Correct? Likewise, even for Hombade films, the moment when they have released in all these theaters, in order, like if they have to replace the entire thing within overnight, okay, it is not possible. Here, the problem is about the execution of that order, not about whether the judiciary has, okay, was able to pass it or not. Judiciary, I mean, the courts have given you the relief. It is you who have to go and have it executed. Hmm. 
so so uh, like you know i have seen the quotes from where it was was okay and where the quotes are there today in the sense like you know when a particular ip related issues have been uh, like you know before any court the way how it's been treated the courts can like you know they can apply their mind on uh, the ip related issues the courts are really like you know uh, working really fast and the entire process is also very very fast at the moment Uh, thank you for talking to the federal. It was quite informative. Hope this helps uh, other filmmakers and bands, uh, uh, you know, to be more careful with copyright issues uh, in the coming days. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Nice talking to you. Subscribe to the federal's YouTube page for more interesting updates.